We can use spreadsheets to achieve a lot. <laughs> They're everywhere. From planning our holidays and weddings to managing inventories, payroll, sales and customer service relationships. But spreadsheets are not always the most elegant solution. They're a pretty blunt instrument. Spreadsheets offer a huge amount of flexibility. They're incredibly usable, at least on a small scale. But those benefits are weighed against some pretty significant downsides. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase. And I'd like to show you how you can make an app from your Excel spreadsheet and why you might want to. The core question is, where do spreadsheets fall short? If you've worked with large spreadsheets, you know they can get disorganized and unwieldy. And when you introduce multiple users to a single spreadsheet, things can quickly get out of hand. You have data loss, unauthorized access, reduced integrity and usability issues, human error, and a lot more. The more mission critical your data, the more important it is that it's handled in an accessible way, in a way where your data is kept safe, and a way where it can be used to drive actions as quickly and as seamlessly as possible. If you have a large data set with thousands of rows, it can be really hard to find the key piece of data you want, which may mean you make mistakes by changing the wrong field or in the wrong row. And if you're collecting data from users, you don't want everyone to have access to all of the data. You want to have role-based access control. You want to make sure that the right data has been shown to the right people and only certain users can delete or update particular fields. With BuddyBase, it's straightforward to be able to build custom web applications. I want to show you how to do it with this spreadsheet here. I have a list of sales with my customers, who they are and where they are, and baskets with things that they have bought at various points in time. Each basket has its own ID, as related to a particular customer, their cost, description, and when they bought. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save both of these files as CSVs, comma separated value files. I'll save as, and I'll call this my sales CSV file and save. And now I'll go to my other tab and I'll save this as this is my baskets. Yeah. I'll then log into BuddyBase and I'll create a new application. And I'll call this CSV sales. I don't want to include the sample data, so I'll uncheck that and I'll create my app. In my data section, I'm going to use the BuddyBase DB. I could go through the steps of migrating my data to a SQL database, which BuddyBase can integrate with really seamlessly as well. And that offers a whole load of other benefits in terms of related data being easily migrated. But for now, I'm going to stick with the BuddyBase internal. I'll click that and continue. And I'll create a table from CSV file. So I'll upload baskets.csv and I can confirm the data type of each field. So the basket was going to be a number, the customer ID was a number, the total cost was also a number and the display column I'm going to choose is the basket ID and I'm calling this my baskets. So there are my baskets. Now I'll go to BuddyBaseDB and I'll create another table and this is going to be my sales. I'll upload my sales.csv file and change some things in number. The rest looks fine. And I'll use the customer ID as the display column and I'll create. So now what I have here looks a lot like what I had before, but the benefit of having this inside of BuddyBase is I can create a more user-friendly form straight away. So if I go to the design tab, if I click on add screen and list view and continue, I'm going to create screens for both the baskets and the sales. I'm asked what access level I would like. So basic means that our users have to be logged in. We have to be users of our application. Public means they don't need to log in and power and admin are both elevated roles you can use to isolate certain screens or actions for particular users. I'll leave it at basic and click done. And what I get is links at the top, screens on the left hand side, and these tables in here. So let's click preview to see this from the front. I can see these baskets. I can create a new basket. I can see sales. I can click on a sale and change the sale from the table over here. I can create new ones. And everything I can do with the spreadsheet, I can do here. But my data has more security. 
It's filterable in the same way I'd expect from my spreadsheet, but what else can we do? So we can think about replacing our Excel spreadsheets in a couple of ways. Dashboards, admin panels, sign-up forms, data entry tools, and tools like this one, the create, read, update, delete, the CRUD kind of tools. And largely, the functionality is the same. In my data layer, I can create a connection between the seals and the baskets. So in baskets, I'm going to add a new column, which is going to be my customer. And I'll set that to be of type relationship. Which table is that relating to? It's relating to my sales table. And one sales row could have many basket rows because one customer might make more than one sale. And I get this customer column here. Now in my spreadsheet, I kind of had that with this ID. And for small data sets like this, I could just go through and match them. I could say, okay, customer ID two, that is Jane Smith. So I can go over here, I can set this to customer ID two. I can just go through and match these. Um, customer ID four. For larger data sets, this could be slightly more annoying. We suggest migrating to SQL first. And BuddyBase is able to integrate with SQL just as well. And this is due to some of the limitations that spreadsheets have. We're kind of trying to get around those a little bit. Now that those have been matched, I don't really want to need this column anymore, so I'll just hide it. So I'm going to use the email as the display column because I think that's easier and makes more sense when I'm over here. I can drag and drop these columns and move them around to make them more helpful in the back end. And that I think that's that's helpful. Back over on my basket screen, this has been updated. And actually I don't want to see this customer ID anymore. So I can click on the table. I can click on configure columns, add all columns and remove the customer ID. And if I scroll down, I'm gonna click on configure fields, which is that form that pops out. And again, I'll add all columns and delete the customer ID over there as well and save. Let's have a look at this at the front end. Got our baskets, that's looking pretty good. If I create the row, I can select the customer that I want to buy here and fill out the rest of it. Already that feels nicer than the Excel spreadsheet alternative. We can also create custom business logic that's going to allow our applications to be much more powerful than the spreadsheet. Let's go back to the data layer. I'm gonna add another column. It's gonna be a formula column and it's going to be high cost. And the formula here, and says JavaScript expressions are executed to ensure a return to value. So I want to return is the basket fields total cost greater than 1000. I'll save that column. And nothing's here because none of the costs are greater than 1000. But if I change the cost of this basket to be 2050, then we can see this field now says true. Now, what might we want to happen if a high cost basket came in? So far, all of our baskets are 650 pounds or less. Adding this extra cost could be a risk, could be fraud, and maybe should be looked into before we commit to providing that product, we should check that this is a real sale. And that's where our automate tab can come into its own. So in our data, we prepare our data, we organize our data, we relate our data in whichever way we need to. In our design, we're preparing some kind of front end so that our users who are either the public or internal colleagues can use this data to drive decisions. And our automate tab allows us to trigger events inside our app or beyond based on things that happen or using webhooks, maybe another service calling into this application. So let's create an automation. I'll call this high cost trigger. And there are a number of ways that I can trigger events when something's created or deleted, when there's an action like an, a button being pressed somewhere inside our application, when a cron event has happened. So this is how we trigger something every hour or midnight every day, a webhook. So this is calling in from another application into this application to do something or row updated, which is the one I'm going to use. Row updated will be triggered when a row has been updated and when it's been created. So it covers those two use cases. The table I want to monitor is the baskets table. So when a row on the baskets table has been updated, I want to start this workflow. And I can decide what to do after that. 
I can carry out any of these actions. I can wait, I can do a log, I can do delete or create other rows. I can tr call out other applications. But I'm gonna create a condition first because I don't want this to trigger for every row creation or deletion. I want it to only happen when there's a high cost basket. So to do that in reference value, I'll hit this lightning bolt. I'll hit trigger outputs, trigger row, dot high cost. And I want to know when that equals true. So when that equals true, we want to keep going. If it doesn't equal true, then we'll stop. When that equals true, what do we want to do? Well, we could have more logic. We could update other rows. We could do lots of other things. We're going to create a Discord message um, because that's what my team is going to be using to be able to monitor our online store or whatever we're doing here. You could use Slack, Zapier, or Make as another way to automate and to keep your team going be able to integrate this into your workflows. Hit save. And this requires a webhook URL and the message that we're going to create. Now to create a webhook URL, you need to be an admin or know an admin or have admin privileges. So here's the server I have admin privileges on. I go to integrations, webhooks. I can create either a new webhook or one I've already created for this called captain hook. This could just be our buddy base hook. We can name that and save it and then we'll copy the URL and bring that with us into our Discord. We call this high ticket alert, it's the name of our bot. We can give it an image, but by default, it'll be the buddy based logo or the logo of your application, and then our message. So I'll hit this little lightning bolt and I'll create my message. I'll say alert, high ticket basket. I'll say basket of value, trigger outputs, trigger row dot, total cost, which is a column on my table. Create it, check out order number. And then that was trigger row dot basket ID created by, um, I would like the email address of the user that created it. Now I have a relationship column on my baskets, which relates to the user. So I can use trigger dot row and that relationship column is called dot customer. And that gives me an array of possible users. It's zero indexed. So I want the first one, so it's dot zero. And I want the email, like that. Let's save that. And when we have any automation, if we want to persist it and check it out, we have to publish the app. So I need to publish the application and then I'll view it. So I'm in my baskets table. I'll click this basket and I'll change this from 200.5 to 2000.5 and I'll save. The row has been saved. Fine, everything looks good. If I check now over on Discord, I can see I've got this message, high ticket basket, basket of value 2000.5, check out order number one created by Jane Smith at example.com. So automations allow us to do more with less. They allow us to use code to be able to carry out actions based on conditions within our application, much more powerful than a spreadsheet and they can build in seamlessly with your current workflows. So as you're updating your next spreadsheet, ask the question, will an app help make this task better, safer, more effective, and help us turn our data into decisions quicker and more effectively? Thank you, bye. I hope that's been useful. Check out our channel for more ideas for how you can turn your data into action, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.